The House Democratic Caucus was deeply disappointed in the fiscal irresponsibility of, of the House Republicans in yesterday passing a $266 million tax cut that will only serve to push the state further behind when it comes to funding things like public education, health care, public safety, and transportation in Oklahoma. At a time when uh, Oklahoma citizens are desperately seeking uh, this legislature to reinvest in core functions of government, to turn around and, uh, and cut $266 million in revenue is just uh, probably the definition of fiscal insanity. And it was our hope that the governor would veto that legislation, knowing full well that we've not even seen a budget yet. We don't know how much money or how much, how many cuts are going to be made to important uh, core functions of government yet. And in spite of all that, this Republican majority decided to simply pass the legislation, uh, pass the tax cut, uh, without knowing what the future will hold. And unfortunately, I think it's not going to bear well for the state. Um, with um, that being said, also we were. Um, not surprised by the fact that the, the, the House Republicans could not get a capital bond proposal, a $160 million capital bond proposal passed. While the House Democratic Caucus supports completing uh, the repairs to the state capitol and may even be open to the idea of a bond proposal, we think it's, it's, it's fiscal hypocrisy to cut $266 million in taxes. In other words, to tell the voters of Oklahoma, oh, we've got plenty of money, we can go ahead and cut $266 million in taxes, but then say, oh, but we can't pay for much needed repairs to the state capitol, therefore we have to take out a $160 million bond proposal. Our caucus was not going to sit by and, and allow that type of hypocrisy to continue. We wanted to shine a light on that, and, uh, and that's the reason we opposed those measures. We hope that you'll see Senate and House leadership sit down with us and craft a new plan, maybe uh, paying for uh, those repairs with, uh, with actual GR dollars in the near future. That, that's what we're advocating for. Or they simply could rescind the tax cut, but uh, we all know that's not going to happen. Um, and so we were a little surprised by that. But not, not, not only were we surprised by the fact that they continue to move in that direction with $160 million for the bond debt plus $266 million for the tax cuts, we were also surprised that the Speaker's artificial number of 51 votes to get anything passed apparently only applies to one measure out here. Uh, there were only 34 Republicans who were willing to vote for the capital bond proposal in the House of Representatives, but yet he heard the bill anyway. There weren't, there weren't 51 Republican votes to support the Home Builders tax credit earlier this year, yet he heard the bill anyway. There weren't 51, votes to hear mo uh, 51 Republican votes to hear many other bills this year that the Speaker's called up, yet he heard them all anyway. And instead of, instead of, 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 of being consistent and calling up the Cultural Center that has well over 60 votes now to support it, he simply shelves it. He calls up $160 million worth of bond debt, only has 34 Republican votes, but a bill that he knows has over 60 yes votes that would easily pass out of the House of Representatives for a pay-as-you-go approach to completing the Cultural Center, he, ref he refuses to hear. And it's simply mind-boggling to us. I, I think it's crucially important for farmers and ranchers, senior citizens, and the business community to listen to what the debate held yesterday. You had major Republican leaders in the House of Representatives basically admit, well, when we cut income tax revenue, they basically were, uh, were tacitly agreeing that supply-side theory isn't going to work, that they don't expect to cut $266 million of income tax revenue and see all of that come back into the coffers via income tax. They, they basically said that. What they said is, is as we cut those revenues in order to fund government, in order to fund core functions of government, we need to look at tax credits and incentives for the business community. And from there, we will receive the money to fund education. So major Republican leaders have, have sent the author of the tax cut bill, Leslie Osborne, sent the message loud and clear to the business community. Listen up. We're coming after you next. Once we cut income taxes to the point we want them, in order to fund government, we're going to come after tax incentives and credits for businesses. They ought, to be, they ought to be concerned about that. The State Chamber of Commerce ought to be concerned about that. And then when you look at the situation with the county sheriffs, it is indicative of what my caucus has been saying for years now, that as you reduce revenues at the state level, that will no longer be able to help fund public safety and education in the counties. What's going to have to happen is those schools and those county courthouses are not going to close. They're going to continue to maintain them. And in order to do that, the, the Republicans will force property tax increases on farmers and ranchers and senior citizens to maintain basic services such as public safety in our, in, in our schoolhouses. And so the people need to know, the business community and our property owners throughout the state need to understand that this push for income tax, cut, income tax cuts will mean very little to most Oklahomans, even those who benefit from it, benefit very little. But if their property taxes increase or their schools or their local county sheriff's offices suffer, uh, the, the, the negatives will far outweigh the benefits.